All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We want to use the first derivative test to identify all relative extrema for the function f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 10. And so the first step to using the first derivative test is to find the critical values for your function. The critical values are where the slope is zero, and those are the points that are going to have the potential to be either a relative minimum or a relative maximum. And so let's start by taking the derivative of this function, and then we'll set it equal to zero, which is how we're going to find those critical values. So if we start by taking the derivative, we will have f prime of x is equal to 2x plus 8. And so now if we set our derivative equal to zero, we'll have zero equal to 2x plus 8. And now if we solve for x, that is going to be our critical value where we might have a relative min or a relative max. And so we'll have negative 8 is equal to 2x if we subtract 8 from both sides. And if we divide both sides by 2, we'll have that x is equal to negative 4. And so now we have our critical value of x equals negative 4. And if we draw a number line here, I like to think of it as the x-axis. I think that's going to help you kind of visualize where these intervals are going to be coming from, which you'll see in just a second. And I want to label all of our critical values. Now, in this case, we only have one, negative 4. So I'm just going to label it right in the middle there and write negative 4. And so now we can see that we have two intervals that we're going to be interested in here. We're going to be interested in all the negative values on our x-axis all the way up to negative 4 and all the values from negative 4 to all the positive values of x. And so what we have is negative infinity to negative 4 and negative 4 to infinity. So our two intervals are going to be from negative infinity to negative 4 and from negative 4 to infinity. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to pick a value between these two endpoints and plug it into our derivative and see if the result is positive or negative. Because remember, the first derivative is the slope of the function. So if you plug in a value and you get a positive number out, that means that the slope is positive. And if you plug in a value and the outcome is negative, then you know you have a negative slope. And so I'll pick a value between negative infinity and negative four. I'm just gonna choose a negative five. Now you could pick any value. This is a part that I think a lot of people get confused with. You don't have to pick the same number as me. You could pick negative six or negative seven or negative 10 million, it doesn't matter. Just pick a number that you think is going to be nice to evaluate in your derivative, as long as it is between the endpoints of the interval. And so if we plug that into our derivative, we'll have two times negative five plus eight, and that's gonna be equal to two times negative five, which is negative 10 plus eight, which is equal to negative two. And so let me clean this up a little bit. We know that the derivative at that point is negative two, which is a negative slope. And so that means that this function is decreasing on this interval. And so we can write minus on our number line there to signify that it is decreasing or has a negative slope on this side of our critical value. But now let's test the other side. Let's test this interval. Let's pick a value between negative four and infinity. And in this case, I'm gonna pick zero. So I'll have f prime of zero, and that will be equal to two times zero plus eight, which would be zero plus eight. So the value of our derivative here is eight, which is positive. So our slope is positive here, which means it is an increasing function on that interval. And so I'll label that as well on our number line. And so now we're almost done. We have now found that as we approach this critical value, our slope is changing in sign. It starts out negative or our function is decreasing and then it hits this critical value and then it changes to a positive slope or an increasing function. And so this means that we're going to have a relative extrema at x equals negative four. Particularly, it's going to be a relative min because it started out with a negative slope. But now let's continue and finalize our answer here because it's not just going to be x equals negative four, we also need a y value for that relative min. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug negative four into our original function to find its corresponding y coordinate. So I have f of negative four, and that's gonna be equal to negative four squared plus eight times negative four plus 10. And that will be equal to 16 minus 32 plus 10. And so then if we take 16 minus 32, we'll have negative 16, and a negative 16 plus 10 would be negative six. So that means that our value is negative six. And so our relative minimum is going to be at negative four, negative six. Again, that is a relative minimum. And that is the final answer to this problem. We found the one relative extrema for this function. Let's look at another example. 
So for this example, we want to do the exact same thing. We want to use the first derivative test to find any relative extrema for this function. We have x cubed minus 9x squared plus 15. And so our first step, just like last time, is to take the derivative and then set it equal to zero. So we're going to have that f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 18x. And then the derivative of 15 is just zero because the derivative of a constant is zero. And again, I got this derivative by using the power rule on each of these terms. So if we set this equal to zero, we'll have zero is equal to 3x squared minus 18x. And now we're gonna solve for x to find our critical values. And so I see I have a common factor of 3x in each of these. And so if I pull that out, we'll have 3x times x minus six. And then we can set each of these parts equal to zero. So we're gonna have 3x equals zero, which is going to mean that x equals zero. And then we'll have x minus six equals zero, which means x equals six. And so now we have two critical values of x equals zero and x equals six. And so if we draw our number line once again, and then we wanna label our two points. So we're gonna have zero, and then six. And now we can see that we have three different intervals that we are going to be testing. We have an interval from negative infinity to zero, then we're gonna have an interval from zero to six, and then from six to infinity. And so let's write those down, and then we'll test them to see where our function is increasing and decreasing. So I have negative infinity to zero, zero to six, and six to infinity. And so let's start with negative infinity to zero. And I'm going to pick negative one as my value. And so if we plug that into the derivative, we'll have three times negative one squared minus 18 times negative one. And that's going to be equal to three times one, right? Negative one squared will be one. So three times one is three. And then we're gonna be subtracting negative 18, but that would become a positive 18, right? So we'd have three plus 18. And so that would be positive 21. And so our answer here is positive 21. And that is a positive slope. So we can say that our function is increasing here. And so then we can label that on our line as a positive slope. Then let's check our next interval from zero to six. We'll have f prime of a value between these two endpoints. I'm gonna pick positive one in this case. And this will be equal to three times one squared minus 18 times one. And so we'll have three times one, which would be three minus 18, which would be negative 15. So now we're going to have negative 15, which is a negative slope. So it's going to be decreasing. Our function is decreasing on that interval because it is a negative slope. And so we'll label that on our number line as well. And then finally, let's test a value for our final interval. And so in this case, I think I'm gonna pick the value of 10. So we're gonna have three times 10 squared minus 18 times 10. And so in this case, we'll have three times 10 squared. 10 squared is 100. So we're gonna have 300 minus 180. And so that's going to be equal to positive 120. And so we'll have 120. And that is a positive slope. So that's going to be increasing on that interval. The function is increasing for that interval. And so we'll label that on our number line as well. And so now we can look at our number line and see that on either side of our critical points, the slope is changing in sign. It's going from positive to negative around our zero and going from negative to positive around our six. And so both of these values are going to be relative extrema because the sign of the slope is changing. And so our zero is going to be a relative maximum because it's starting with a positive slope and our six is going to be a relative minimum because it is starting with a negative slope. And so now in order to finalize this, we just have to plug zero and six into our original function to find what their y values are, and that will be our relative min and our relative max. Now to save time, I'm just gonna give them to you and maybe you wanna go and check to see if you can get the same value that I'm going to get. And so if you plug zero into this function, you're gonna get 15. And so that means that our first point here, zero, 15 is going to be our relative max. And then if you plug six into your function, you will get negative 93. So you're gonna have six comma negative 93, and that will be your relative minimum. And so that would be the final answer for this problem where we have our relative max and our relative min for this function. Let's look at another example. So here we wanna use the first derivative test to find the relative extrema for this function. We have negative x minus two quantity cubed plus eight. And so let's start this one just like we started all the other ones by taking the derivative of our function 
and setting it equal to zero. So we'll have f prime of x is equal. And in this case, we're going to have a chain rule, right? We have an inside function of x minus two and our outer function is this cubed quantity, right? So we're gonna have the derivative of the outside function. So we'll have negative three times x minus two and then subtract one from our exponent three to have two. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is just going to be one, right? Derivative of x minus two would just be one. And then the derivative of eight is zero, so we don't need to write that. So this is just going to be our derivative here. And so if we set that derivative equal to zero, we'll have zero is equal to negative three times x minus two squared. And then if we solve for x, we'll divide both sides by negative three, and so we'll have zero is equal to x minus two squared. And then if we take the square root of both sides, we'll have zero is equal to x minus two. And so that means that x will be equal to positive two. And so that's going to be the only critical value. And so I'll draw our number line here, and then we'll label our critical value of two. And now we can see we have two intervals for us to test some values in, and that's gonna be from negative infinity to two, and then from two to positive infinity. So we'll have negative infinity to positive two, and then from positive two to positive infinity. And so let's test a value within this interval to start. And I'm gonna choose one. So I'll start by writing that f prime of one is equal. And so then we will plug one into our derivative and we'll have negative three times one minus two squared. And so one minus two is negative one, negative one squared is positive one. And so this is going to be equal to one times negative three, which is just negative three. And so we can actually erase this and then that would be the value of our derivative. And so we have a negative slope, and so that means that the function is decreasing on that interval, and so we would have a minus sign on that side of the two on our number line. And so then let's pick a value between two and infinity and test that, and this time I'm gonna pick four, and if I plug four into our function, we'll have negative three times four minus two, and that's going to be squared. We'll have four minus two, which is two. Two squared is four, and then four times negative three is negative 12. And so our answer here is negative 12. And once again, that's a negative slope, and so our function is decreasing on that interval. And so on both sides of our critical value of two, our slope is negative, and that means our function is decreasing. And so what we find is that x equals two is not a relative min or max because the sign of the slope does not change around it. And so in this case, the answer to our problem is that there are no relative extrema. Let's look at one final example for this example video. All right, so here's our final example. We have the function f of x equals x plus nine over x. And so to use the first derivative test here for this function to find our relative extrema, the first thing we wanna do, just like we have been doing, is to take the derivative of our function. So let's start with that. But I see that we have an x in the denominator, so I'm actually gonna rewrite this function first. So we'll have f of x is equal to x plus nine times x to the negative first power. And I think that's going to help us take our derivative a little bit easier to kind of visualize how we're going to use the power rule here. And so in this case, f prime of x is going to be equal to one plus nine times negative one times x to the negative second power because we're subtracting one from that exponent. And so then if we simplify this, our derivative will be f prime of x is equal to one minus nine divided by x squared, right? We just moved this variable with a negative exponent to the denominator, so now we have nine over x squared. And then if we set this equal to zero, we can solve for our critical values. So we're gonna have zero equal to one minus nine over x squared. If we add this quantity to both sides, we'll have nine over x squared is equal to one, and if we multiply both sides by x squared, we'll have nine equals x squared. And then the square root of both sides will give us that x equals plus or minus three. So we're gonna have two critical values here, positive three and negative three for this function. Now, I'm going to draw our number line, but there's one more thing that we gotta do because of this particular function. But let me just draw the line here and then we'll discuss what we have to do yet. All right, so here's the deal. So far, we haven't really come across this, but if you have a function where you're going to have some point of discontinuity or a point where your function is not defined, you're going to want to take note of that. Although it's not a critical point, it's a point that you want to make sure you take into account because there's a potential that where a function doesn't have a defined value, that the slope of that graph will change its sign. So let's quickly take a look at this function here because I see that we have a variable in the denominator 
which is a red flag, right? That means you're going to have a point that isn't continuous somewhere, right? So what makes this function have an undefined value? Well, in this case, if we just set that denominator equal to zero, it's just x equals zero. So you know that if you plug zero into this function, you're going to have an undefined value. And so we need to make note of that on our number line. And so I'll label that point zero, and then we'll add in our critical values. So we have negative three and positive three. Now this might not actually affect things in the long term. It's going to give us an extra interval to test, unfortunately, but it's better to be safe than to miss it entirely. And so here we're gonna have four different intervals. We're gonna go from negative infinity to negative three, and then from negative three to zero, and then from zero to positive three, and then from positive three to positive infinity. So we'll have negative infinity to negative three, we'll have negative three to zero, zero to positive three, and then positive three to positive infinity. And so now we'll test a value in each of these intervals to see if the slope is negative or positive. And so we'll start with our first interval here, and I'm gonna plug in negative four. I think that'll be the easiest one to do. So if I have f prime of negative four, and we plug negative four into our derivative here, we'll have that this is equal to one minus nine divided by negative four squared. So that's gonna be one minus nine divided by 16. So one minus nine sixteenths is going to be seven sixteenths. So I'm going to erase this, just write seven sixteenths. And this is a positive slope, it's a positive value. So that means that the function is increasing on this interval. So we'll have a plus sign for that interval. And now let's test a value on this interval. I'm going to pick negative one in this case. So we'll have f prime of negative one. And that's going to be equal to one minus nine divided by negative one squared, which is just going to be one minus nine. So then one minus nine is negative eight. So we have negative eight, and that is a negative slope. So that means our function is decreasing on that interval. And so we'll have a negative sign there on our number line. And then we'll test a value between zero and three. In this case, I'm going to use one, and that's going to also give us negative eight, right? If you plug one into this derivative, you'll have one minus nine divided by one squared. That's the same calculation we did up here, basically, except it's a positive one, but it doesn't change anything because we're squaring that value of x. And so the function is also decreasing on that interval. And so we'll also have a negative sign between zero and three. And then finally, let's test a value between three and infinity and I'm going to pick positive four, and that's going to give us 7 sixteenths once again, because it's going to be the same calculation as this right here, because squaring positive four and negative four is going to give you the same result. So we're just gonna have 7 sixteenths again. And so this is a positive slope, and so then we know that the function is increasing on that interval. And so we have a plus sign there. And so now let's analyze our number line and see what's happening here. Now remember, our only critical values here are negative three and three. That's what we found from setting our derivative equal to zero and solving for x. This zero right here cannot be a relative extrema in any way because it is a point of discontinuity. It doesn't count. But we did have to put it here and check values between it because there was the possibility that our function could have gone from negative to positive between this point. Now that would not have made this a relative extrema, but it would have changed what's happening around this critical value or this critical value, right? So it's important that you still include that discontinuity. But what we do see around our two critical values is that our slope is changing signs. And so now we know that we have two relative extrema for this function. Our one at negative three is going to be a relative maximum because it starts out with an increasing interval, right? It's positive slope here. And our positive three is going to be a relative minimum because it starts out with that decreasing interval or that negative slope and then changes the positive. So I'll make some room here and then we'll write our final answer for this problem. All right, I gave us some space here so that we can write our final answer. And so now let's find the y components for our relative extrema and we're gonna get those y values by plugging in the critical values into the original function. And so I'm just going to give you the answers here, but feel free to plug in those values yourself and check my work. And our first point will be negative three, negative six, and that's going to be our relative max. And so then our relative min is going to be three, positive six, and that is our relative min. Which brings us to our final answer. And so those are all the examples I had for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.